James, our, our last standalone story goes back to Canada. Federal government is weak-minded on the CETA deal. That's the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement deal. There's a lot of information in there, but I could not work it all out for you right now. But needless to say, there are, again, a ton of PDF links because the devil is in the details. And there's more from tradejustice.ca. But briefly, the National Farmers Union wonders whether the federal ministers and parliamentary secretaries promoting the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement across Canada have actually read the text of the agreement, or did they simply memorize pre-digested talking points? It gets into agriculture, food, and farmers. And, James, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say this is all about harmonizing goals between nations and it's all oh, it's just it's just about trade right where it's just jelly bean sizes is that what they say yeah exactly right yeah that was the infamous quote of uh, <laughs> Stephen Harper our our mm-hmm. wonderful prime minister in Canada when they were talking about uh, the conspiracy theorists who think that uh, the SVP is about making highways to to Texas or to to the moon as he liked to joke no we're just <laughs> counting jelly, be- jelly beans there's nothing to see here Exactly. Harmonization, emphasis on harm. We'll move as we're blasting through all the stories, James, in in a lot of ways, I hope. You know, I hope what I do doesn't do a disservice to the information and not giving it enough time. But, I again, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if there is enough time anymore. All you got to do is look at the news and realize, oh, well, maybe there's not a whole lot of time. So... The bigger-than-usual binge and purge on Food World Order, which is at the top of the page right now, it's basically the big data dump of information collected by myself and also Adam helping out. So it gets larger and larger and larger, and just, you know, take the time, take a few minutes, scroll down the list, hover over each link, and you'll kind of see it. And as you go down the list, again, I, I think it kind of paints a story. So, but for time's sake, I've, I've pulled just a handful of what I think are some of the most important bits in this binge and purge that's called Kashi, Monster, Windsor Hum, and more. There's a great, fantastic new chart of the 10 companies that control the enormous number of consumer brands. It's a huge graphic, and the main big boys in the middle, of course, are Kraft and Coke and Pepsi and Nestle and Procter and Gamble and Johnson and Johnson and more. So it contains all those kind of mainline products, but it also gets into a lot of the fake, you know, uh, alternative products that I see on my shelf at the grocery store I work at. So Kashi, it all kind of sparked from a, a blog called The Green Grocer, an independent natural retailer. It's a store and a, and a website. In Portsmouth, Rhode Island, unexpectedly created a swirl of anti-GMO activity on the Internet this week, most of it targeted directly at Kellogg's owned Kashi Company. It's come out that their soy is 100% GMO, and it started a huge firestorm. And that's, again, the way that things are going to change is when people stop buying the products and the companies get hit in the wallet and we just don't buy it or, you know, like... Lisa Simpson says in the you know that Halloween episode, you know, just don't look, and the advertising and all this garbage will all crumble under its own weight. <laughs> absolutely, and and for people who haven't seen that that map that you're talking about, the corporate food map there, absolutely, Ooh. yeah, well done, very incredible. I've already saved it to my hard drive. I hope other people will do so. Uh, likewise, on that note, let's take a short break. We'll be right back with James and Bellotto of FoodWorldOrder.com right after this. Welcome back to Corbett Report Radio, friends. I'm your host, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. We have some somber music for what has been, unfortunately, a somber series of uh, stories tonight on a lot of different fronts, including the food, health, environment fronts with uh, foodworld, foodworldorder.com and James Evan Pilato. But James, I understand you have a uh, more of a positive note to leave us on tonight. Let's go out on, on a positive note. And again, I think we try and follow up on, if not the exact stories, then just some of the themes that we hit on previous episodes 
Albuquerque, New Mexico, the 32nd largest city in the, in America, ends water fluoridation. A major health victory achieved in New Mexico where officials in the state's largest city, Albuquerque, have made the historic decision to stop artificially fluoridating the municipal water supply. More on that from naturalnews.com. So, see, again, we, we can make some, you know, victories. We can and we do, and it's important to understand that and to really take that to heart because if we lose sight of that, we lose sight of the only thing that matters, which is what we can actually affect in this world. But on that note, <laughs> let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, we have some programming announcements for the next uh, few weeks. So first off, let's tell people about next week's uh, Food, world or- uh, Food World Order here on Corbett Report Radio. Well, next next week, there there no food next week, right? There will be no food next week. Yes, that's right, <laughs> friends. Uh, James M. Plata will be taking the week off the Food World Order broadcast, so he will not be here next Thursday night. Instead, we have a different guest lined up for th- next Thursday night here on the broadcast. But New World next week will be taking place as usual next week, right? Absolutely. So <laughs> it'll it'll all shake out, and of course, everybody, you know, if stay subscribed to the feed, so you know you you won't miss. You'll a thing. get it when it comes out. Exactly. So we'll do New World but, next week. We won't do Food World Order, but James. But uh, on that note, as people who saw the most recent New World next week will know, I announced that I'll be on some vacation later on this month. So starting around the middle of the month and until the end of the month, I'm going to be out of town, out of the country. Actually, I'm going to be taking a holiday with my wife. And that means that uh, there will be no Corbett Report uh, podcasts or videos coming out during that time. But there still will be Corbett Report radio here on Republic Broadcasting. Rather than playing rebroadcasts for you for three weeks, which I think would get a little bit repetitive, I've, uh, I've lined up some guest hosts who will be hosting uh, different nights of the week. So on Thursday nights for the three weeks at the end of May, it's going to be James Evan Pilato hosting the entire show, and he's going to be taking the reins from me, so uh, I couldn't have left it in better hands, I think. On Monday nights, it's going to be uh, Stefan Molyneux of Free Domain Radio is going to be stepping in. Tuesday nights, it's going to be John Rappaport. On Wednesday nights, we're going to have the OKC crew, the um, uh, James uh, Lane and Holland Van den Neuenhoff from uh, the producers and, uh, and directors of A Noble Lie. Thursday nights, James Evan Pilato, foodworldorder.com, mediamonarchy.com, etc. And on Friday nights, it'll be Richard Andrew Grove of tragedyandhope.com. So quite a good lineup of uh, hosts there, I think, a lot of different people. So once again, for the final three weeks of May, uh, that's going to be the, the lineup for the broadcast. I hope to, you know, well, and, and I, I so appreciate the opportunity and, and to be surrounded by all the other fantastic, you know, hosts is, is great company. I hope to be able to have a live interview guest on at least one of those shows concerning Nestle, one of the massive food corporations. They're trying to bottle our Oregon water. They're trying to get the rights. So we, we're going to have to fight that. So look for that and, and so much more on, on those episodes, James. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to it. So thank you so much for doing that. I I truly appreciate it. So I hope uh, everyone will be tuning in for those nights and all of the other guest hosts we'll be having later in the month. But uh, next week, I'll still be here on the broadcast. We'll be talking some more. And uh, and on a side note, anyone who wants to get in any DVD orders, uh, please do so in the next week because I'll be taking a few weeks off and won't be able to fulfill any orders that come in during my holidays. On that note, James Evan Pilato, always a blast. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, man. And thank you to all of you out there for listening. Once again, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I am so thankful for you all out there. And I'm looking forward to talking to you again in 23 hours. So until then, thanks for listening and take care. 